Kevin King is back on the podcast to share with us updates on a wide variety of things, from his new health regimen that's helped him lose 50 pounds, to how to use chat GPT to help your Amazon listings, to travel tips, an update on his Amazon NFT project, and much more. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Hey guys, heads up. Kevin King is the new host of the AM PM podcast. So if you love Amazon strategy, make sure to subscribe to it. Whatever you're listening to this podcast on, take a listen to AM slash PM podcast just by searching for it on that platform. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS free, unscripted and unrehearsed organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. And we've got somebody on the show that maybe you've never heard of. He's brand new to the Amazon world, a newbie. We like uh, interviewing newbies here. How's it going, newbie? Kevin's back. How's it going, man? It, it, can you still sell on Amazon? Is it still a good time to sell on Amazon? <laughs> I don't know, but I would suggest taking this course called Freedom Ticket. Uh, there's this guy with a nice looking shirt, kind of like what you have there, who, who has a lot of great information on how to sell on Amazon. Uh, okay, I, I will do that. But uh, how fast can I make some money? I, I have I have like 200 bucks. Is that enough? Uh, that's more than enough. You just get a whole bunch of friends and family to leave you positive reviews and, and just make sure to give them their money back and you'll be set for life. But 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 I don't know. I mean, how can I protect myself? What if I send my $200 to the supplier and he never ships me the stuff and I, I, I you know, what 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 am I what should I do? <laughs> This is great. People are like listening to this, like, what is going on? But yeah, that guys, if you're brand new to this show, which not many of you are, and like, you know, you guys have been diehard listeners since the beginning. You know, you know, Kevin King here. This is probably like the sixth or seventh time he's been on the podcast, which is a record for anybody. But but we 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 don't play. Uh, we don't give Kevin the same rules as everybody else about coming on the podcast only once a year because he's always got some great information to share with us. So, uh, Kevin, first of all, I, I wanted to. Uh, come out with you choosing the best World Cup final to go to. But like people say this is the best World Cup final in the history of World Cup. And that was your first and only one you've ever been to, right? Yeah, I can't, I can't take credit for that. My wife actually chose it. She told me early last year, she's like, you know, on my bucket, she's not a big, she's not a sports fan, but she's like, on my bucket list, I want to go to a, nas a college national championship game. I want to go to a Super Bowl. I want to go to a World Cup. And, uh, you know, she has this list. I'm like, okay. Um, and so I started looking into it in March of last year, right when the, the tickets had just come out. And mm -hmm. it was almost impossible to get them. I mean, there's like no hotel rooms in Qatar. And, uh, you know, the flights were limited. So you had to buy these like expensive package deals. And I told her, all right, we'll go. You know, I don't know if Columbia, we didn't know who's going to make it. Columbia, the United States, you know, they're still doing the uh, qualifying back then. Yeah. I was like, so we'll go in November, uh, you know, sometime when it starts. Um, because then it's cheaper. And she's like, no, no, I want to go to the final. Uh, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Uh, so we just booked it, uh, you know, back in, in March and ended up getting lucky and uh, being there at the right time. And it was an amazing game. It was yeah. uh, really, uh, really, I mean, it was amazing watching it on TV. I can just imagine what the atmosphere was like, was like over there. And actually that, that, that's what I'm going to start this, you know, podcast. You know, we're going to be talking about a lot of things from NFTs to Amazon and NFT to Amazon strategy and whole bunch of stuff, but, but something I've been doing on the podcast lately, you know, I know Kevin, you listen to podcasts, you probably noticed where I, I'm asking guests about like their, their, you know, what, what are their health, you know, their mental health, physical health, their hobbies, like, like what kind of things are they doing outside of the entrepreneur world to keep them sane? And I know you like traveling is, is one of your, uh, you know, hobbies as well. And, and going to like, uh, you always find Michelin restaurants in different places, but but what are some other hobbies that that you um, are doing, you know, to kind of like just take your mind out of uh, of Amazon 24 seven? Yeah, I mean, travel is a, is a big one for me because I I actually shut down. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll check emails uh, just to make sure something didn't blow up. You know, an Amazon account didn't get suspended or some major crisis. But other than that, most things just they get ignored and left till I come back. And then I'm really busy when I come back. But that's I get quality time. And like you said, I, I like to travel. I like to uh, to go and eat good food. And, you know, I post that sometimes online. Uh, and that that's important to me to get those breaks and mental breaks, you know, sitting on a beach uh, somewhere, you know, your mind can just just clear and it can think of like you, you come up with some of your best ideas that way. 
Uh, but then local, you know, just locally when I'm in Austin, um, you know, I work out three times a week with a trainer. We have a trainer that comes to our house and works my works me out for 45 minutes, then works my wife out for 45 minutes. Uh, and then uh, I have a nutritionist uh, that I have a call with uh, every week, uh, every about every 10 days. She's in Miami uh, and uh, she, it's not a dietitian. She's not like, OK, here, eat, eat, uh, eat rabbit food and uh, quinoa. You know, uh, it's, not, it's not one of those kinds of things. It's more about uh, the psychology of eating, and that's been very been working with her for about two years. Uh, my wife had found her; she's originally from Venezuela, but it's all it's called intuitive eating, and it's about the psychology of eating rather than um, you know going on a diet. She's like, never think of yourself as being on a diet; you'll, you'll fail every time. It might work; you might lose some weight, but you're gonna fail. You got to change your ways, change your psychology, and then as a result of this, over the last two years. Uh, I don't know if you haven't seen me lately, but I was just at a, a couple of weeks ago at an event in uh, New York and people were like, looks like you've lost a lot of weight. And I've lost about 50 pounds. Uh, and it's not from eating it, going on some sort of keto diet or some sort of special diet or whatever the current fad is. It's just changing the psychology of, of the way I eat. And so that that's helped me. Then I get regular massage uh, pretty much every week. I uh, Sometimes we have a person come to the house. Other times I go to like, uh, I have a, a therapist or sometimes I go to the, it's mostly, um, Chinese, uh, like massage, you know, foot massage and re reflexology and that kind of mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I do that. Um, I also have a personal therapist that I see every two weeks just to talk. I mean, I don't have a problem. I'm not like, don't have some mental issue or don't have some PTSD or st whatever, but mm -hmm. it's just, uh, rather than, you know, if there's something that's bothering you, rather than talking to a friend who's not really qualified, uh, they may be a good ear, but the, I go to them. Uh, so that's for the mental health side of things. Then I try to make uh, some time every day to actually just chill, just watch, you know, a program or TV or or whatever. Go for, take my dog for a walk or or something like that. So I, I try to balance it. It's rare that I sit down and work like you, you know, ten, twelve, fourteen hours straight. I mean, I, I do more in chunks. All right, you're making me feel so bad here with all this stuff that you're doing that I'm not. I'm actually doing my stand up desk, and I'm gonna get on my uh, my under desk treadmill. Let's see if I can keep my my wind up throughout this uh this episode here but uh that's great you're doing a lot and it's 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 paying off you know the that's 50 pounds is loss is pretty uh, impressive now it's gonna take, take me yeah, a couple more years to get to where i want to be but it's a slow process and then you know i also work with a concierge doctor so you know i i i'm on top of all my you know i'm not one of these guys you know t guys are really bad about not going to the doctor but i'm i'm really good and really on top of of all that stuff that's great. So, guys, th this has probably been the best answer we've we've got yet about somebody who's really taking care of their their mental or mental <laughs> mental my mental health is not good. I can't even talk mental and physical uh, uh, physical health. Now, let's um let's take it back. This the shirt I'm wearing, Bulls and Apes uh, shirt. This is this is a NFT project that actually got started by uh, the founder of Helium Ten. You know our, our good friend Manny Coates and and, and Guillermo uh, Puyol. And like I never thought I would get into NFTs, but then I was like, let me give this a try. Like anything, you know, this guy created the number one Amazon, you know, software company in the space. Like, uh, I think I can trust him, you know, when he gets into something. So I was like, let me give this a try, but can you just give people a quick rundown on like this bulls and eight project? And then we're going to tie in like NFTs to how it can tie into Amazon selling, because you had some very interesting things you were talking about at sell and scale recently. And I know you're starting a project where Almost no Amazon sellers are thinking about uh, about tying NFTs to uh, Amazon. So go ahead. Yeah, it's just it was a, a year ago, I, a January of 2022, that um, Steve Simonson happened to be in town, and Steve, myself, Manny Coates, and Mark Dawn all went to uh, to dinner. And at at the at the table, you know, Mark and uh, Manny are talking about uh, that they're investing in crypto and these different things. And Steve and I at the time were like. Uh, that's just not for us. You know, we don't understand it. This doesn't make sense. Not for us. And then Manny had mentioned something like this BAP project or bulls and apes. And it's the first time I'd ever heard of it. And he said, we've been working on this for a little while. We're going to revolutionize another space. You know, we already revolutionized the helium, the, uh, the Amazon software space. We're going to do it, uh, somewhere else because, you know, they sold out in 2019. They basically retired. They got bored and they're like, Let's, we got to do something. You know, we can't just sit around the house. So they, they built this company. And they noticed in the uh, the NFT space that there's just you know most people associate NFTs with JPEGs of uh, 
pixelated JPEGs of uh, monkeys or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And NFTs can be a lot more than that, uh, a lot, lot more. That's that's what where they're starting right now. But the, the NFT space is ripe with fraud and get rich quick schemes. And a lot of people who have no business experience, they promise yeah. the world and they can't execute. And Manny and Gee said, let's, let's revolutionize this business. Let's come in and like, let's do a project um, and let's let's put a money back guarantee on it. Uh, if you don't like it, you know, we'll, we're not we're going to give you your money back within six months. You know, there's certain parameters and rules, but it, it was uh, and, and let's let's build this with a really good uh, roadmap and a really good utility, you know, extra bonuses for people that hold this stuff. And let's really gamify this. Because most people don't know M Manny and Guy's background is in gaming. Before they did Helium 10, they were actually working together developing gaming stuff. So it was almost a perfect fit. So they, in, in, a, in a market that was on its way down and crashing, they launched uh, this project uh, in May, end of May of last year. And it took them about 67 hours or so to sell out to about 10,000 of these NFTs raised about four million dollars but Manny, most projects would take that four million dollars and you know go buy a new lamborghini or disappear or uh use that to fund their business but manny geek kept that in the account um you know in case everybody wanted their money back that so they self-financed it and so that money stayed there and then it it did well and they they create an entire lore around this like there, there's like a comic book type of video that kind of explains what they're doing They've done a lot of utility where you can invest. If you hold one of these bulls, you can invest in a lot of different things like uh, that you wouldn't have access to if you're a qualified investor like SpaceX and OpenSea and different things like that. They've created this great community around it, uh, and it, it's it's done very, very well. Uh, I mean, I, I got in at the beginning, uh, and I, I wasn't going to do it. You know, In January, I was having this meal, and I was like, this doesn't make sense. And then around March, some of my partners and, and one of my other Amazon businesses said, hey, we we we're going to this NFT conference. It happens to be in Austin in June. You should go, uh, you know, cause I think there's an opportunity here tying e-commerce to NFTs. And I was like, all right, I'll take a look at it. I started looking into it and I started talking to Manny a little bit more. I was like, you know what? There actually may be something here. So I got involved in their project one, because I trusted them and I know their, their history. And two is just to reverse engineer what they're doing and just learn. And I ended up going to spending June of uh, 2022, going to a bunch of conferences learning as much as I can about this space. And um, like like you said, we're doing something in, in the Amazon space with it. Uh, we can talk about in a minute, uh, tying mm -hmm. it together. But but back on the Bulls and Apes, so they, they, they've launched this. It's done well. They're about to, uh, in just a couple weeks, uh, February 7th, they're releasing um, the second part of this, the Apes, which are synergistic with the Bulls. And there's a lot of gamification to it. Um, but the way they're doing it is brilliant. And the way they're reaching out to other projects to tokenize these other projects and bring people in, it, it, it's, it's brilliant. And so I think this thing could go to the moon. But overall, the project in a, in a market that right now where everything is crashing and it's just nothing but negative news out there, my investment in them is up 5x. And I believe when these apes come out, that's going to go up uh, dramatically. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of people late to the game, so they're having to, to pay a premium price to get in if they want to get in. But if you're out there listening, um, you may take a look at what they're about to do. You're, you're a little bit late, but you can still get involved. Yep. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's a really good project. Yeah. So like for me, it, the reasons to do something like this, and it's not for everybody, but for me, the reasons why I do it is like twofold. One, one thing is, is kind of like what we were talking about earlier about the, you know, having hobbies and mental health. Like it, there's a lot of gamification going on and strategy, you know, like, like trying to collect those special traits, then trying to, uh, you know, increase your money. Like I bought one, people thought I was crazy. A few months ago, I paid like about $2,500 for one that I was like kind of speculating on. And sure enough, I just sold it for about like seven, $8,000 uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so like, it, it's, it it's like one? fun. To, it no, alpha? it wasn't alpha. It was the gold cowboy hat. Okay. There was only two of it in the whole collection. And so I was like, Hey, somebody put it up for sale. I'm going to grab this. And I know it's going to go up in price. And sure enough, uh, it did. So like, since there's only two out of 10,000, super rare, if you wanted the gold cowboy hat, you had to get it from me, you know? So, um, I did that. And then, and then just like, just general, you know, general investing, you know, like I used to invest a lot in baseball cards. I know you've done that you know, in the past. I was like, it's, it's a great investment in my opinion. Like if you're doing, if you know what you're doing. And so that was the reasons why I got into it. But now, you know, so, so guys, if you want more information on that, just go to bullsandapesproject.com. You know, I don't have no affiliate link or anything. I'm not trying to make any money here. I don't get anything if you do it or not, but I just think it's a really fun program to uh, help you 
know about NFTs and, and they actually have a course, kind of like a freedom ticket for yeah, uh, it's NFTs. Like a freedom ticket course, like NFTs 101. If you're, you don't understand what, what they are, it's, it's really good. All right. And I apologize to those listening on the podcast. I'm a little bit out of breath because I'm on this tre- treadmill now, but hey, I was getting kind of shamed by Kevin's uh, fitness uh, routine there. So I'm all inspired. But anyways, speaking of NFTs, now let's talk about, or let, let me just give you one of my ideas. You know, I know you're, you're going to talk about, you know, what, what your project is with Amazon, but even something a little bit less like, like, like I, I love what you're, you're going to talk about. I think that's like a home run, but like something that has maybe a less easier barrier of entry. Like what about me as an Amazon, you know, seller or somebody who can manufacture things? What if I went to like uh, an NFT project or community? Cause you know, the, the, like you said, you know, Manny and Guy raised like, you know, how many million dollars because of, you know, what they sold. And then there's like a creator fee. I believe they get whenever, you know, uh, something changes hands. So like, what if you went to one of these projects and said, Hey, let me, let's, let's make a, a product where, um, the community decides on like a five different products. Like, like, say like you did your product research using helium 10 black box or however you have five different opportunity product opportunities. And then you go to them and say, Hey, put this to your audience and say, which one they want they want to go forward with and then you know the creator funds it but then you like you, you run it on your amazon account or whatever but like the deal is now you share all of the profits with that community and they 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 somehow like trickle it down to their community some of the you know some of the profits or or perhaps, you know, they get free, free products or something like that. But to me, without having to create my own project, which you're, is what you're going to talk about, do you think there might be NFT project owners who'd be, who would be down to do something like that? Yeah, that, there could be. That's, the problem is in the execution. And the, a lot of these, that's the problem. You know, if you went to Bulls and Apes and were able to work a deal with them, they could execute on it because yeah. Manny and Guy and you know, they got 40 employees behind this project. They could, they could, they could execute on this, but a lot of these people can't, you know, it's 16, 18, 20 year old kids with no business experience. And there's, there's some out there that, that are solid, but it, it's, it, it's not a lot. And I know that like Isabella Hamilton was trying to do is, or trying to do something similar to that to help mm-hmm. pick people launch. I think it could be a little bit difficult. That is, like you said, there is a barrier to entry to this. You got to know a lot about Amazon and e-commerce. You got to know a lot about NFTs to tie yeah. these things together. So it's not something for a novice to necessarily get into. But I think the opportunity is, is immense uh, with it, and that's that's what we're doing with one of our companies. We, we've had a company that's done sustainable products. You know, we we take uh, plastic out of the ocean and we recycle that and, and make it into dog life jackets or into dog poop bags or into different products. And it's done okay. Uh, it hasn't uh, gone gone bonkers. But about a year ago, we we said, you know, this is we're barking up the wrong tree here. You know, when Search Find Buy went away, and like it's getting more and more competitive. But there's a lot of really great products that you could make out of sustainable materials. But to try to rank them on Amazon, it's next to impossible against someone that's got ten thousand reviews or has been selling for years. Even though your product may be superior and may have a good cause, and so how can we? We're like, how can we do this? You know, and the old way was go build an email list or start a Facebook group around something. And, but that doesn't mean that they're going to buy anything. That just means they might be interested. And sometimes that can work, but a lot of times that just fails and and it's becoming more difficult. So we said, what if we, like you said, the, the, the mentality of people that are in NFTs and it's a subset of people is the collector mentality. They, they're, they're passionate about something and, and they collect things. And so what if we could merit, and I have a background in selling collectible stuff. So what if we married these two together? And so what if we use the NFTs to build a community of people who are in a, into sustainability? And we're not building an NFT that you hope that you buy it for a few hundred bucks and sell it for $10,000 a year from now, like we were talking about with Bulls and Apes. That's not the purpose of it. The purpose of the NFT is to have something, and we're doing dynamic, just like Bulls and Apes is doing with the Apes, where you can actually customize your 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 PFP, you know, by changing the hat or changing the accessories and stuff, we're doing something similar to that. Um, but what we're doing is you buy the NFT and the NFT is almost like a membership card. And that membership card then says, one, you're, you're, you have a badge of honor that, Hey, I'm, I care about sustainability that you can display on all your social media. And it's like a, like an official badge. And then two is that you, we will create sustainable products and we will exactly what you just said. We will come to this audience 
And hopefully we have five to 10,000 people that have bought these NFTs in the beginning. And we say, look, we're thinking about doing a baby stroller. We're thinking about doing dog poop bags. We're thinking about doing whatever. We'll do the data to make sure it's it, it's uh, valid and it's something that could actually work on, on Amazon and Walmart using Helium 10. And then we'll go to them and say, which one of these do you want to do? And we'll let them have some say in the design and input of it so they feel like they're a part of it. You know, almost be like a pick foo um, type of a, a deal or that little vote on it. And then we will create the product and then we'll launch it on Amazon. And when we launch it on Amazon, we will tell our community they're basically our initial buyers to get it ranked. We'll say, look, you go buy the product. And as a result of you buying the product, uh, maybe they'll get a small discount, you know, something like that. But they're going to earn like reward points almost for buying it. And there's going to be an NFC, not NFT, but NFC, near field communication code on every package. And they can scan that with their phone and that will airdrop them an, another NFT that has a value, kind of like Bulls and Apes is doing with the tokenomics and the teens and stuff like that, that has some sort of value that they get totally for free just for buying the product. And then we hope because they were, had a, 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 they, they were involved in the design of it and choosing it, Several thousand of these people will go buy it. It'll launch it straight to the top of Amazon. And then other people will see it on Amazon that have no idea about the, the NFT side of it. And there'll be an insert in there and we'll capture a new audience. You know, some people uh, will, will join the community as a result of this. And then for every, th there's some specific rules we have to be careful here uh, to, to not make this a security uh, around the SEC. But, but they, they, will, they will share and every item that's sold will be go back to the community almost like a DAO. And they'll actually be able to, so a percentage of every item sold on Amazon or Walmart or wherever of the products that they help design and, and, and launch will go into this fund. And that fund can be voted on by the community what they want to use that money for. They can go and do a, a beach cleanup in Long Beach, for example, or they can put some, some uh, wells in a, a village in Africa or do some other charitable events. And everything is tracked on the blockchain. So... All of our products, we're using NFTs besides just the, the JPEGs. The, NF, the technology, the blockchain technology behind it is what's, what's amazing. So everything is fully transparent. You know, a lot of these companies will come out and they'll say, we donate, uh, you know, was it Bombas or something said, we give us a pair of socks away for every sock, uh, sock pair we mm -hmm. sell. But how do you know they actually do that? Yeah. You're trusting them that they do that. But how do you know when it's on the blockchain, when it's tied to an NFT, you know, you, anybody can look it up. You can see everything. You can see we're going to tie NFTs to, to the goods. How do you know that we're actually using recycled ocean plastic? Well, when there's a company in Spain that will tie an NFT to the original, man, when it comes out of the ocean, and they tie an NFT to the invoice all along the supply chain. So you can see this came out of a, the ocean uh, out of uh, Mallorca, Spain. It went to this factory, went to this factory. It got melted down here. You can follow the whole chain. So it's full transparency. So we're going to be doing some of that as well. And then we're going to go you know, to other companies that had, there's a lot of companies that have sustainable products. One of the, the other co-founders of the company is on a board, of, uh, on a VC board that sees a lot of sustainable stuff. And he's going to come and he's going to provide a lot of deals that he sees are the companies that are almost like they want to do a Kickstarter. So they don't know anything about Amazon or e-commerce or Walmart, but they, they have a great idea for a product that's sustainable. We'll be their launch pad, basically. We'll say they can come to us. We'll partner with them so we don't have to develop ourselves and finance ourselves every single product. So that way we can expand our reach and our product uh, variety much, much faster. And we'll become like the, the sharper image or something of uh, sustainable products. And so that's, that's what we're doing. Uh, and we're in the process of, of building that out. One of the other partners is uh, uh, has connections with Anamoto, which is a huge company in the space. And they're coming out with something called a green token, just like uh, the ERC-20 token that uh, Bulls and Apes has with uh, the tokenomics. They're coming out with something called a green token, which is all around sustainability. So we were going to build this ourselves, but it's going to cost uh, into the millions of dollars to actually do this. And But they're yeah. doing it. So we're kind of waiting for them to launch that mm -hmm. this summer, and then we'll launch our stuff because that way we can tie into their deal and we can do exactly what... Manny and uh, Guillermo, and they're doing with tokenomics and bringing all these other communities into the fold. And so it's a, it's a project that I think is going to do very, very well. But there's a lot of moving parts, and it's not necessarily for, for, the, for the newest people uh, out there because there's so much involved. But I think it's going to give us a major competitive advantage and really set us apart. And uh, we'll be able to launch almost anything on any platform. Uh, that awesome. And it's that. not something that's just like a one time thing. All right. This is a one time project and now we're done. You can just keep, you know, in perpetuity almost, you know, keep launching yeah. products and, and utilize the community to help with that. I, I like we it. have a lot of gamification in it as well. Um, there's mm -hmm. a, there's a whole gamification side 
to it. Um, and so there's, yeah, I mean, someone may sell this NFT uh, and, uh, you know, they may make a profit on it, but that's not that's not our ultimate goal. Uh, like most NFT projects, it's more of a, the NFT is almost like a membership card. And that's what Budweiser and Starbucks and some of these others are doing. It's almost like it's a reward, uh, but it's all on the blockchain. It's all tr fully transparent. It's easy to reward people uh, instantly uh, on this. Just like, you know, like I said, you know, if you buy the product, you scan the NFC, it ties to your wallet. Uh, and it automatically airdrops you, you know, something else that you that's a value to an NFT person into into their wallet. And they collect enough of these. They can redeem them for products. They can. There's just a whole lot of cool stuff. And if, if you get, dive into NFTs, NFT, the, the technology behind it, it is going to be the future in a lot of industries. It's going to be more more omnipresent. It, right now, it's people think of it as JPEGs, and that's that's the beginning. But the technology behind it is going to revolutionize real estate, going to revolutionize a, a lot of industries. And, and it's a little bit complicated right now. It's kind of like, a, you know, with credit cards. You know, if, I don't know if you remember 20 years ago, if you're going to accept credit cards, um, you couldn't just do it on a website. You had to actually call an 800 number, give the credit card over the phone, uh, or you had to mail it in. And people had to write out like a, one of those charge slips. You remember there's those machines where you take the credit card and you you know, and then you would take that slip and you would deposit just like you would a check to the bank. And then like three to five days later, you would get credit in your bank account as a merchant. Now, none of that exists. You know, it's just instant. You know, now you just tap your phone on a freaking thing and it's done. Um, that's what that's where the NFT, the technology right now is that like little credit card, old school credit card machine called the 800 number to get an approval. It will get to where it's like you don't even think about it and you might not even be called NFTs, you know, the, the or people that are dealing with it will be called something else, but the mm -hmm. NFT technology is what will be powering it. And the average consumer will never know that. Yeah. But that's, that's where it's going. And so we want to be, we want to utilize that uh, in commerce uh, with e-commerce. And um, we think it's, you know, we're, we're raising some additional cat money for it right now. We've already got uh, some stuff going really well, uh, but we're, we're probably be launching in the, in the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, with, with that whole project. That's our target. Now, switching gears, uh, you know, the last time you were on this podcast, I, if I'm not mistaken, it was kind of like to announce, or, you know, the last time we had you on here for a full um, full episode was to announce that you were taking over the AMPM podcast, just kind of full circle, you know, like you were first a guest on that podcast way back before anybody even knew uh, who you were. Uh, how, you know, I, I, this is the first podcast you've ever hosted. How's that been? It's al almost, you know, coming up on, uh, uh, it's going to be a year, you know, so soon. Like, how, how's it been hosting a podcast? Yeah, I took that over in June, and uh, but it's it's been great. Yeah, that podcast, you know, Manny Coates started the AMPM podcast back before there was a Helium 10. He was documenting uh, his journey. Knowing Manny, he probably started on purpose knowing he'd have a Helium 10, but he started it just to document his journey as a seller in uh, late 2015. And I, listened, I stumbled on that podcast back then and listened to it and thought it was great. And he had a Facebook group that, uh, that I ended up posting in a few times, and he liked what I said. I think the same thing kind of happened with you, and... and invited me on the podcast and uh, I said, no, no, I don't want to go on. I'm a, you know, just a seller. I'm trying to launch five brands here. And he's like, no, just come on. And so I went on and, and you know me, if people that know me, I just kind of say it like it is unfiltered sometimes it gets me in trouble every once in a while, but uh, I say it unfiltered and that, that just resonated. And from there, other podcasts and events asked me to come on speak and just kind of, that's um, what started this whole process of me speaking and and doing things um, outside of selling. I mean, I still sell, but outside of the selling. And that's that was, uh, it was kind of um, surreal to actually take that over. It came full circle. And then I interviewed Manny as the first guest. You know, we talked about that a little bit back in June. And but it's been great. I, I love doing it. Um, I try to take a different approach to it. And the reaction so far has, has seems to be good. I, I know the numbers are, are uh, up and uh, yeah. are, are looking looking good. And I think it's the audience likes it. Any tips that they've, you know, recent guests have given out that like some of your favorite tips, like stuff that maybe like you hadn't even heard of before? Can you, anything stick out in your mind in the last you know, couple months? Yeah, one of the big things that right now that's you're going to hear a lot of people talking about, or if you haven't already, is AI and e-commerce. And uh, Anthony Lee was just on a, a recent episode. 324. I see uh, that right here. Yeah, so 324 a few weeks ago. And that episode... Uh, it's done very well and, and i've been playing with the uh, chat gpt and some stuff and he he 
told me some things on there that I had no idea about uh, that you could do with it um, and how this is going to really impact e-commerce. So, yeah, there's I do it because I get to talk to people and I get to learn as well. It's not just me, uh, you know, grilling somebody. And like your episode, you you were on uh, a few uh, back at the first of the year and that episode, you know, even uh, the guy that edits uh, edits all these for us, Mel, he was like, man, that was a really good episode. I learned a lot about Bradley. I had no idea about uh, that was really, really cool. And he's like, I, I don't even want to really cut this episode down. It went like, you know, we're supposed to have these like 40, 45 minutes and it went like an hour. And he's like, there's, I don't know what to cut because it's all so interesting. So that, that's, um, uh, yeah. So it's always, it's always great. I always learn something on, on every episode. Cool. And another, another kind of format that for years you've been kind of having guests on where you invite guests on is our elite, uh, monthly trainings where, where this is for our helium 10 elite members. We used to call this the Illuminati program where you bring some experts who will come on and actually like talk about stuff that you probably don't hear on, on podcasts and such uh, in the last, you know, six months or so, any, any tips from there that, that somebody has mentioned that, uh, that, that really stuck out to you? I mean, there's, there's so many, I mean, pro, I mean, to be honest, the, the, the monthly trainings, we bring two to three guests on, they, they do a, like a 45 minute presentation. And then I do a seven ninja hacks at the end of that. Uh, and so it's about three hours or so, uh, training and it's everything from sourcing to PPC to compliance to, you know, I, I try to cover a wide gamut of, of topics, you know, this month on the helium 10 elite, uh, we're doing, we have someone presenting on AI, uh, actually that it's, uh, in just a couple days on the 24th, uh, is, is the session they're going to be showing and demonstrating how you can use AI with Amazon listings to really, uh, kick it into gear and, and, and. Then the, the we I do the ones probably my favorite aspect of it and probably where the best tips actually come out is in the uh, the monthly uh, live uh, sessions that we do. So every Friday, so a team member from Helium Ten jumps on a Zoom call and and a bunch of the Helium Ten elite members get on there and like have a little mastermind and talk. And then once a month, I do one where I come on and and lead it and we go for two or three hours and we just talk about whatever's on people's minds. And some of the best stuff actually comes out of those. In my opinion, you know, there's, there's people sharing different ideas and different demonstrating different things. And so, um, I think that's the best value right there. And then, and then the next one would be, you know, the, the, uh, the trainings that we do. And then the, after that you get special tools and special advanced access to helium 10 tools before they're released to the public. And even some special tools that only helium 10 elite members get, and you yep. get to go to the, in-person events. There's one coming up uh, right before Prosper yep. where you get to go to those at no ch extra charge if you're a Helium 10 Elite member in live in-person uh, events. Uh, um, so there, there's a lot of good benefits to it. And it's um, it, it's, a, it's a good program. I mean, it's, like you said, it started in 2017, February of 2017. Manny and Guillermo came to me and said, hey, we want to do this little mastermind. There were some other people doing something similar at the time and we're going to charge, you know, about 400 bucks a month for it. You want to be part of it? Um, and I was like, um, sure. I'll give it a shot. You, you know, you're paying me a little bit of money, right? And so I said, yeah, yeah, we'll take care of you. So, uh, we started that and then it, it became helium 10 elite. And now it's, uh, you know, the high level membership, uh, for, for helium 10. And it, it's, it's great. It's a, it's a, it's a good, uh, program. And, you know, we get a bunch of people that come on live and there's a lot of people like that. I don't have three hours. I'm busy. Uh, you know, and they'll, they'll watch it on the replay and, uh, and, some of them cherry pick what they watch and like, I, I don't need to know anything about PPC, but this guy talking about uh, sourcing, uh, I really need to know what he's talking about. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's a great program. So I recommend it not for new sellers. You know, if a new seller, it's, it's a lot of money to spend if you're brand new and have a limited budget, but if you're doing more than $25,000 a month, you should be in it. Absolutely. Uh, and, um, the bigger, the bigger you are, the more value you're going to get from it. Yeah. So speaking of, you mentioned elite exclusive tools, you know, one of the recent ones we did a few months ago was the ability to use kind of like Cerebro in historical uh, context. Have you, have you used uh, that feature yet in your own uh, Helium 10 account? Uh, I have not personally played with that yet, but I've been doing that uh, with brand analytics. We've been downloading the brand analytics stuff. And uh, for the last, we have like three, go back about three years mm -hmm. on it. Um, and I, I do that, but I need to go in and play with that. I've, I've heard yeah. good things about it. Gives you a little bit, you know, it still has the brand analytics in there now, but now, now you have an expanded look at where people are doing sponsored ads and things like that. So guys, if you're interested in, uh, you know, get, you know, getting kind of uh, personalized uh, once a month training with, with Kevin, that's in these uh, uh, round tables that he does and getting all the, 
the training that everybody gets in the elite program, you can join the wait list at h10.me forward slash elite, h10.me forward slash elite. Uh, how about just some general uh, Kevin King hacks uh, for us that maybe, you know, we, we did that webinar last year where we had 50 of 51 of your top ones. But do you have anything uh, new that you've come up with uh, since then that you can uh, share with our audience? Yeah, I've got a few things, but uh, you got to. That's that's for the Helium Ten Elite members, you know. You got to you get you got to the good ones. You got to come into Helium Ten Elite. Yes. And every month I've got seven good ones, and like this month, uh, I've got seven more really good ones. You know, occasionally we'll share those on on a webinar, or if I present I, uh, somewhere, I might share a few. Um, but you got to be careful on that, you know. That that that's because if everybody knows all these cool things, then then everybody's going to know everything. Uh, you, you you want to work yep. for a select group. We got well, that's why we that's why some of the stuff you'll only hear or most of the stuff you'll only hear in an elite. But do you have anything that's not an elite exclusive thing that you can uh, help people out with that you think that you know in talking with sellers and stuff you notice that a lot of them are not utilizing a certain strategy? Well, I think the one that that's hot right now is is Chat GPT. So one of the cool things that you can do with like Chat GPT is you can actually go to Helium Ten, pull up the you know pull up your competition. Uh, pull up the uh, X-ray tool, download the the four and five star reviews, get all the 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 top phrases in there. You know, it shall show you that you know this phrase is, was said this many times. Take that over to ChatGPT and ask it to write a listing using all those phrases. You can also have it. You can also download like all the negative reviews, and you could upload all those reviews. Just copy and paste them into ChatGPT. You could say analyze. You could tell Chat GPT in plain English, please analyze these reviews. Tell me what the top five reasons are that people don't like this product, and then write a description that that turns these negatives into positives. Do it with a little bit of humor, and it needs to be three hundred characters or less, and it will do it. And it's amazing what it will spit out. So I think that is one thing that. Every Amazon seller needs to start playing with, especially if you're not a native speaker. And even mm -hmm. if you are a native English speaker, uh, it can give you a lot of inspiration, a lot of ideas. Um, you can get product ideas from it. You can go in and you can and you can set, you can type in a bunch of keywords. Take take a bunch of keywords, uh, like for your your top five pro SKUs, let's say, paste it in there and say, "Give me some ideas or other products that you would recommend that." People who like this, these things would like, and it'll brainstorm for you. And it's almost like, uh, like Anthony said uh, in the in the podcast. If you haven't listened to the AMPM podcast from a couple of weeks ago, it's like having the smartest human that you could talk to. It's like being in a room with the smartest person you could talk to that will spit back stuff to you. It, it's it's an amazing technology, and I think it's going to revolutionize a lot of Amazon sellers' uh, businesses uh, if once they they know how to use it. That that would be the, the tip that. You need to go play with this um, if if you haven't. And it costs no money too, right? Like like right obviously now, if you're already using Helium Ten, then, then yeah. the other side of it doesn't cost money either, right? No, it's it costs the company that's hosting it. Yeah, they're, it's costing them a few cents per query, but they're it's in beta and they're doing it to, to fine tune them, fine tune it. Now it's 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 it basically knows everything through 2021. So it doesn't know, you know, if you ask it something about the Ukraine Russia war of 2022, it's not going to know much about it. It's the database right now is through 2021, uh, and that's on purpose because you know it's they're they're testing the the testing everything. Yeah, but this is going to change the way you search. You know, one of the examples I gave in the in the podcast that when when Anthony and I were talking is I think search on Amazon is going to change. I think uh, you know right now if you, if you're going to for example if you're going to the beach and you you're like taking your family to the beach you have to go into Amazon and to buy the things you need, like, okay, type in beach towel, look at the results, type in a uh, beach umbrella, look at the results, type in uh, cooler, uh, picnic cooler, uh, what, whatever the different things you might, you think you might need. Uh, and you got to do individual searches on each one of those and choose them. I think, you know, Amazon's probably going to use some of this AI where you can just say, uh, you can literally just type these words, uh, beach trip, family of three, uh, kids, uh, six, 10 and 12, uh, Cancun. Uh, you know, and it will come back and will spit out everything that's applicable to those age groups to getting on an airplane because you're going to Cancun. Uh, you know, it's nothing that's going to be too complicated and spit out a search results that shows you towels and coolers and everything that's that you need. 
uh, that that's coming and it's going to change the way you build listings. It's going to change, you know, this is not tomorrow. It's not going to happen tomorrow, but it's coming yeah. and you need to get, you need to get on the front of it. And so I, I think, uh, I, I think there's some really cool stuff going to be coming with, with this AI. We're getting closer and closer to that Cyberdyne world of Terminator movies <laughs> before we're, it's kind of crazy where technology has come. All right. Well, Kevin, thanks for uh, sharing this, but there's one uh, last thing I definitely want to call out. One of my favorite events of the year um, is the Billion Dollar Seller Summit, and you have two a year, one virtual, one uh, in-person. So what's the schedule like for 2023 for Billion Dollar Seller Summit? Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, the Billion Dollar Seller Summit is an event that I do, like you said, twice a year, once virtual, which is coming up February 21st to 23rd. So you can do it from anywhere in the world. It's cheaper than, than coming to the in-person one. Uh, the in-person one is in June in, in uh, Puerto Rico. The in-person one costs a little bit more, but it's a heck of a lot of fun. It's not just uh, the way we do it is not just not just come listen to a bunch of presentations and, and go to a cocktail party, you know, welcome cocktail party, like a lot of events. We have a lot of networking built in. We have a lot of gamemanship and competitions built in. You know, the last one, uh, I, I got pictures of you riding a little scooter around Austin, uh, you know, looking for clues on this like scavenger hunt thing where everybody was in groups of four, you know, and uh, they were competing for prizes. And I had to go all over and do this cool stuff. And I, I think a lot of people at the beginning were like, eh, I don't know about this. But at the end of it, they're like, that was freaking amazing. I got to network yep. with three other people that I never would have networked, got close to them. So we do a lot of stuff like that. We got some cool stuff that we're doing in Puerto Rico where you're going to, it's almost like Survivor Games, you know, the TV show Survivor and stuff that we're, we're doing. And so, yeah, if you want to, if you go to billiondollarsellersummit.com, uh, you can uh, actually, the virtual one is coming up. It's a, uh, Fourteen hundred ninety-seven dollars, so it's not cheap. But this is content I hand select the speakers, and they they come on and they speak about things that you're not going to hear on podcasts, that you're not going to hear anywhere else. They they bring their A game because I put a cash prize uh, on speakers, and so the audience votes who they think is the best speaker, and that speaker gets five grand. And so no, and I publish the the, the list, and nobody wants to be embarrassed and be on the bottom of the list. So they're all bringing their A game. So hopefully you can join us for that, um, and uh, or. And or come to the uh, to, in June to Puerto Rico uh, for the the in person one, which is a, a, going to be a blast. Awesome! All right, so guys, billion dollar seller summit dot com if you want to do that. And like I said, get on the wait list for Elite H ten dot me forward slash Elite. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for uh, joining us, and I'll be seeing you in person. I'm sure soon. Thanks, Kevin.